I'd like to, to also raise a question regarding uh, Russia, as several of my colleagues have. Uh, General Dunford, you, uh, during your confirmation hearings back in, in 2015, you indicated at that time, and I quote, that if you want to talk about a nation that could pose an existential threat to the United States, you would have to point to Russia. And at that time, you characterized their behavior as nothing short uh, of alarming. Of course, we in Alaska are watching our, our, our neighbors to the east very carefully. We've got 57 miles that separate uh, Alaska from, from Russia over the Bering Straits. And we're concerned by what we see as military buildup there in the Russian Far East. So this morning, I would ask uh, a question as to whether or not you still see Russia's behavior as, as alarming. What do you make of the, the military uh, activities in the Arctic? And, and, and then if you can speak to the, the issue uh, in the Arctic of, of defense cooperation in, in certain areas, um, certainly in the areas of, 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 of search and rescue, uh, that is something that as the Arctic nations are, are, are working and collaborating, um, we, we look to that as an opportunity. But, but uh, again, you've got a tension if you will, between what we see as the as the military buildup uh, uh, juxtaposed to to the other issues uh, that we're facing in the Arctic, Senator, thank you. First, on the, on my overall assessment of Russia, my assessment uh, of their capabilities and their behavior haven't changed since 2015. In fact, I think if you look at uh, at our request here in 17, and I think anticipating what we'll ask for in 18, 19, and 20. Uh, a good part of it is benchmarked against Russia as a as a peer competitor in the areas of cyber, space, maritime capability, undersea warfare, electronic warfare, and the full range of capabilities. So my assessment hasn't changed. In terms of what they're trying to do, I think they're trying to do two simple things. At the strategic level, they're trying to undermine the credibility of our alliances and our ability to meet our alliance commitments. And, and secondly, when you look at their military capabilities, whether it be in the Arctic or in, in, uh, in Europe, what they're trying to do is prevent us from being able to move uh, military power into the region or operate freely within the, within the region. Again, connected to our ability to meet uh, our alliance commitments. So I think they're very clear about what our strength is, which is our allies and partners and our ability to project power when and where needed to advance our national interests. And I look at their political activity, you know, what we really call – uh, adversarial competition that has a military dimension, but it falls short of warfare. So as they combine economic coercion, political influence, unconventional warfare, cyber capabilities, it gets after, again, trying to erode our allies. And then when we look at their military posture, whether it be in the Arctic or in Europe, it keeps us from, it, they, their intent is to keep us from projecting power. Uh, I do see uh, increasing concern by, by Arctic nations to work together to, to mitigate the effects of Russian capability development and behavior. And I think the importance that we place on the Arctic uh, is reflected in the fact the Department rewrote uh, the strategy for the Arctic in 2013. And I think without Lee turning to Secretary's defense guidance that he'll give us soon, I, I, I anticipate that the Arctic will be a critical part of that. Well, my time has expired, Mr. President. I, uh, with, Mr. Chairman, I would uh, submit a question to, to you, Secretary Mattis, along the same lines uh, of the interest in the Arctic, the investments in the Arctic in terms of equipment necessary to defend the, 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 the country in this, uh, in this very changing and very dynamic world up north. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator.